Welcome back to the channel Star Seekers, my name's Luke and in today's indie game review we're going to be taking a look at a game called In Rays of the Light. It's essentially a first person walking simulator with a few puzzles thrown into the mix for good measure. In Rays of the Light was developed by Sergei Noskov and it's a remake of his 2012 game simply titled The Light, which sees you exploring a set of abandoned buildings as you attempt to try and understand what became of the former inhabitants. Having enjoyed several other walking simulators, I was intrigued as to what In Rays of the Light had in store for me and whether its narrative was any match for classics like Firewatch and What Remains of Edith Finch. In this review, I hope to answer that question, so seat yourself comfortably and let's get started. So I'll start by saying that this review is going to be a little shorter than my usual reviews as I'm going to try and avoid spoilers as much as I can. This also means I'm not going to be going into any details story wise since walking simulators are generally all about the story and I also highly recommend not watching the eShop trailer for the game as in my opinion it's a spoiler in itself and gives away way too much information. Now as the game starts, we find ourselves in the second floor room of an abandoned building with no clue of how we got there or where we are and as we play through the game, it's our job to understand what happened here and where everybody went. Scattered amongst the ruins, you'll find notes left behind by the people who used to live and work here and by piecing these together, by the end of the game, you will understand the message that the developer was trying to deliver though some of the game's story elements do get lost in translation. Now if I'm being honest, while I did quite like the game's story and felt it was quite thought provoking, I thought the way in which it was delivered was a little inconsistent, going from the subtlety of handwritten notes and the silhouettes of the people who wrote them, to an in your face, here's my message in case you didn't quite understand it, audio and visual assault on the senses. Now when it comes to gameplay, In Rays of the Light sees you exploring the building you're starting and its surrounding area, which is actually pretty small, containing a total of three buildings and a few other points of interest. As you start working your way through the first of these buildings, you'll start to encounter locked doors and containers and a few useful items such as a metal bar for prying planks from doors and a handy map which does help you find your way a little, though you do have to get your bearings on your own. Further exploration will see you finding a variety of items required to progress through the game and one minor issue that I had was the fact that you can't actually check what most items are. This is fine for some of the items as you can easily tell what they are but things like keys don't have any names on them so you just end up searching around for locked doors and hoping you've got the right key to open them. Now in addition to the aforementioned notes, you frequently find messages scrawled on walls and the combination of the two generally guide you through the game. These are usually quite cryptic in the wording which leads into the game's puzzle elements and this is where I have a few mixed feelings about in Rays of the Light. Several of the puzzles have quite logical solutions to them and are relatively easy to solve but there are more obscure ones and I did struggle with one in particular and just ended up guessing correctly in the end. While I've always been a big fan of puzzle games, their inclusion of them in this game was a little confusing as they didn't really seem to fit into the narrative in any way and seemed only to serve as a roadblock between you and key items. Now this review has been quite a difficult one to write as the game itself only has around 2 hours of playtime in which you learn about what happened to you, the place you now find yourself in and the people that once lived here. This really doesn't give me much wiggle room when it comes to content for the review without stepping into spoiler territory, so for the rest of it I'm just going to tell you what else I liked and disliked about In Rays of the Light. Starting with one more negative as I prefer to end reviews on a high note, aside from the few things I've mentioned about the puzzles and item placements, there's one point in the game that sees you wandering through some dark and winding tunnels. It's pitch black in these tunnels and your flashlight starts playing up at this point, which not only does your eyes in after a while, it also just makes it very difficult to find your way and for me this section went on for far too long. 
On to the positives then, firstly I want to compliment the game's graphics. While they aren't going to win any awards, they're still pretty decent for a first person indie game on the Switch. There are some nice particle effects giving the areas a bit of extra ambience, and I didn't experience any frame rate issues which is always a pleasant surprise. I also like the game's horror elements, which is something I've not really experienced before in a walking simulator, and I think the dev did a great job of portraying how frightened the people must have been huddled down in the dark tunnels, and a lot of this is thanks to the game's audio. There are times in the game where things are quite serene, expressing the beauty of nature as some light piano music plays in the background, but then things get dark pretty quickly and both the change in music and sound effects worked very well to create a stark contrast in the environment and atmosphere. Overall, I thought In Rays of the Light was a decent walking simulator slash puzzle game, but unlike games like What Remains of Edith Finch where all of the gameplay elements feel at one, for me, In Rays of the Light's puzzle and narrative elements didn't really work together to form a cohesive gameplay experience and they felt more like two separate entities. When it comes to a rating, I'm going to be giving in Rays of the Light 3 out of 5 stars. While it's not up there with the greatest walking simulators or puzzle games, and I think its short playtime means it's a little overpriced, in Rays of the Light still has a story to tell, and as a 9 year old project by a solo dev, I'd still recommend giving it a play if you're into these types of games. In Rays of the Light releases on the Nintendo Switch on the 17th of March, you can get it from the UK Switch eShop where it's usually priced at £7.19p or from the US eShop for $7.99. Alternatively, its PC equivalent is also available on Steam. And that about wraps up this shorter than usual Nintendo Switch review of In Rays of the Light. Don't forget to drop it a like if the video helped you out, let me know your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments section below, and subscribe to the channel as I upload new Nintendo Switch game reviews every few days. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and game on.